Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Over the last few weeks, a number of folks have commented and asked about the unit that's right behind me and when I was going to talk about it. Well, today's the day. Today's the day I talk about the Galleon TS120 from Thomas Tan's company, Galleon Audio. I'm excited about this one. Tube amps. There's something about them that's always fascinated me, and, and you know that from watching my videos. But over the last couple of years, you know, I've read, I've watched reviews, I've listened to a few tube amps in showrooms, and I've researched the companies making them. And I can't tell you how many hours I've spent reading about them. I almost pulled the trigger on a couple that were just within my price range that I'd set aside, you know, the money I'd set aside for it, but something always stopped me. I, I didn't want to settle. I know how I am. If I did, I'd still research and I'd wonder if I could have done better and what the next one would be. I wanted one that I could live with and that didn't push me into a second mortgage. And there was one that I kept coming back to, Galleon Audio. If you haven't heard of Galleon, it's because it's a relatively new company, especially when you compare it to you know, companies like Macintosh or Prima Luna. Galleon was incorporated in 2022 and is based in Quebec. Beautiful place, by the way. My wife and I spent a week in old Quebec just last summer. But anyway, I continued to come back to Galleon. I was intrigued. And when I get intrigued by something, I eventually dive in. It was a bit above what I wanted to spend, admittedly so. But it was also below what I feel I could easily spend for a comparable amp. So one afternoon, I closed the file in my computer that held all of the reviews for all of the different companies I'd researched, and I bought the TS120, hoping that my search was over. The documentation that came with the TS120 recommends 300 hours of break in time to reach its optimal sound. That's one reason I wanted to wait before posting a review about it. I'm not at 300 hours, but I would say I'm about a, a third of the way there. And I figured I've lived with it long enough now to talk about it and I wanted to do it justice and also to be honest. After all, I did pay for it. I wanted this review to be based off of my experience and not from what I've read or anything I'd heard. So here it goes. I want to start with the features because, well, they're what first drew me to it. The look of the TS120, while aesthetically pleasing, is secondary when it comes to the features. I want to start with the features because well, they are what first drew me to it. The look of the TS120, while aesthetically pleasing, is secondary when it comes, well, to the features, all of which aren't add-ons or that come with different models. They're inherent in the design. And that being said, there are two models offered by, by Galeon, the Standard Edition and the Special Edition. I opted for the Standard Edition. It costs a little bit less. So this review is about the Galleon TS120 Standard Edition. And from this point forward, I'm just going to refer to it as Galleon. TS120 doesn't roll off the tongue as easily, and this video might be a bit longer than normal anyway. So the features, and some are very unique to the Galleon, and they're bold. Perhaps the boldest is the Galleon is two amps in one. You can switch it between Class A or Class AB. Now, I'm not going to get into you know, what the different classes of amps are here. I'll save that for another time or another video, but just know that Class A amps are active 100% of the time and are often preferred for the sound quality at the cost of efficiency, meaning they consume more power and they run hot. And I can attest to that. The Galleon does run hot. You can feel the heat by standing just a foot away. Not so hot to be a concern, but you know, seriously, I can't wait till next winter because I'll be able to warm my hands over the tubes. <laughs> you know, New England weather can be pretty harsh. Class AB amps well, strike a balance between sound and efficiency. When switching between the two on the Galleon, you have to bias the tubes, which the Galleon makes incredibly easy, and I love the way it solves for this, and I'll get to that in a moment. Being an integrated amp, you can adjust the volume either directly or using the remote. It's no lightweight. The remote could be used for self-protection. I'd carry it into a dark alley. It allows you to adjust the volume, switch inputs, and even bias the tubes without having to get up. Next is the controversial tone controls. 
Tone controls are either loved or hated among audio enthusiasts. Those against them are so because they want the purity of sound the way it was meant to be heard. Those who are for them want the ability to tweak the sound to their liking. Now I get both camps and so too does Galleon Audio. So you can turn on the tone control or opt to bypass it completely. There are two options for bypassing. You have option A, which is supposed to be a more transparent sound, and then you have option B. Now, according to the documentation, the difference between the two may depend on your speakers, so it's worth testing them both out. And I'll touch briefly on these later. I did play around with it. Now, for those against tone controls, I will say this. When enabled, the tone control doesn't drastically change the sound. It's meant for subtle tweaks only, and this plays into what I'll say later. Now, that's the front of the Galleon. The back has a couple of nice surprises. Most of it is standard. You have your inputs and you have your outputs. There's outputs for subwoofers. And if you're a vinyl enthusiast, which I am, you'll need a phono preamp to boost the signal before it reaches the Galleon. What I like here is the ability to select for four or eight ohms. Now, that's another thing I'll say for another video. But the takeaway here is that you can drive speakers rated at four or eight ohms and the Galleon allows you to do so. Some amps are one or the other. Now, there's also a noise reduction switch which is meant to help reduce any hum you might hear from your speaker when everything is set up. Now, I haven't experienced this with my setup. There's no buzz, no hum at all, which is the case with some tube amps. So I can't speak to the noise reduction switch. I didn't have to touch it. Now, my speakers are rated at eight ohms, so that's what I hooked up to. I also only used one input because I'm exclusively a vinyl guy. Now on to the reason for the Galleon. It's raison d'etre, the tubes. There are four tubes in the preamp stage, two AT7s and two 12AX7s. Behind these are four power tubes and they're sitting between the power amp stage and the transformers. The Galleon TS120 standard edition has four KT88s. Now for something really cool. The first thing you want to do after taking it out of the box and hooking it all up is to bias the tubes. You also want to do this whenever you switch the amp from class A to class AB. For me, I'll say right now, I prefer the sound I get with class A. Leaving it in class A means I'll still want to rebias the tubes every three to four weeks. But if I were to switch to class AB right now, I'd need to bias them. Biasing is extremely easy with the Galleon. Some tube amps require uh, manual biasing with a, a small screwdriver and a meter, which is you know, typically present on the amp. Other amps have an auto biasing feature. The Prima Luna line of amps does this. The Galleon has an auto bias feature, but only when called for. It sits outside of the signal path, so there's no effect to the sound when you're not biasing the tubes. It's subtle, and it's a feature I really like. The more you can avoid the signal path, the better. So how does it work? It's as easy as this. You just press change. This allows you to change the amp from A to AB or to bias the tubes. In this case, we're biasing the tubes. So just press bias. You'll see the four tubes light up as well. Now, I biased the tubes this week, so it really won't take long, as you can see. Blue means all of the tubes are biased. If one is red, it would turn blue when the biasing of the tube was complete. When the bias light goes out, which you just saw, just press change again, and you're done. We're good to go. Now, I usually turn my amp on a couple hours before I listen to music. The documentation does recommend at least 20 minutes and that it will reach its full potential in about three hours. The big question is, well, how does it sound? I will say that the first day I listened to it, I was immediately impressed. I mentioned that the amp is quiet, and it is. Even with the volume turned up, there, there wasn't any buzz. I was also impressed by the sound separation. I have a few records I like to test with, and one of the first records I spun was Rush's Moving Pictures. Neil Peart's drums, filled the room. This room, the one I'm in right now, my wife and I call the vinyl room. It isn't large, so you don't have to push the volume high to fill it. Everything I'd read about the Galleon before purchasing it referenced its ability to
to achieve a true holographic soundstage. And I can second that, but it gets better. It took me about three weeks to really see what this amp is capable of. There was some trial and error on my part. First was the speakers. I had sent Thomas Tan, the owner of Galleon Audio and the man who voiced the amp, a picture of the setup along with some initial comments about how much I was enjoying it the very first, you know, the first few days. I think I mentioned the holographic sound as well and the details and the music that the amp brought out. So much so that it was like a magician had come in to remix and remaster my records. You know, that old cliche about a veil being lifted from the music, it's a real thing. Anyway, I'm glad I sent the picture because Thomas recommended that I move the speakers further away from the wall to truly appreciate what the Galleon could do. I did, and he was right. By moving the speakers a couple more feet away from the wall and angling them, the sound stage increased. I was now hearing more separation and more detail. When I closed my eyes and listened to Deep Purple's Burn, I felt as if I could reach out and tap John Lord's keyboard, but it actually gets better. For the first couple of weeks, after adjusting the speakers and um, tweaking the angles, I thought I'd achieved the stage that I wanted. What I hadn't been doing is playing around with the tone control. I'd had the tone control set to A. A is supposed to be the more transparent of the two settings that bypasses the tone control. I was listening to Charles Mingus and I wanted a bit more bass. The Galleon does an incredible job in its neutral position when it comes to controlling the bass, but I wanted a bit more. So I turned on the tone controls and I bumped up the bass a bit. It was you know, very subtle, but I have to say it was an improvement. At least for that record, it was an improvement. I have to admit though, it bugged me. I think it's you know, the audio file in the back of my head poking me and telling me not to rely on tone controls. I know it's silly, and I tried to ignore it for a few hours, but the voice went out, so I decided to bypass the tone controls again. Instead of switching back to A, which I had it set on, I switched to B and that was the sound. I flipped back and forth between B and the tone control settings I had with the added bass, and I could detect only very little difference. In B, I felt the bass was more controlled and more present. Even the mid-range had slightly expanded. It felt more natural. And the treble, while it was never harsh to begin with, no matter what setting I used, seemed a bit more rolled off the top, something I expect to hear with a tube amp. Now, the Galleon turned my vinyl room basically into a concert hall. I found myself more than once wanting to edge my seat closer to the music as if the stage were right in front of me and I was you know, jumping to get a better seat as I used to do when I was younger at concerts. Now it's gotten to the point where I can't wait for the next sitting just to hear another record for the first time. I bought Prince's Sign of the Times, it's right over here, 30 years ago. Now I'm hearing things I never heard before. It's almost like Prince and the band are in the room. One of these days, I'll walk through my entire setup. I know I'll eventually change my speakers after months of research like I always do before I buy something. You know, maybe my phono preamp at some point, maybe even my turntable, but I love the one I have and I don't really see that happening. But what I can say is I can't imagine ever getting bored or wanting more than the Galleon has brought to the table. It's completely changed and enhanced my listening experience. Now, would I change anything about it? Do I have some constructive criticism? Well, not with the sound. I, I actually wanted to have something to offer for an improvement opportunity. I, mean, I do plan to roll the tubes at some point, but I want to give the stock KT88s you know, some time to shine, which they have been. They've been shining, you know, they've been doing great. Now, if I had to improve one thing, it would be this, and it's only because I'm lazy. It has to do with the remote, which I said is a, is a very cool remote. When I settled on the sound profile setting of B, it was after getting up to flip between A, B, and the tone controls. I'd love to have done all of that from the comfort of my chair instead of getting up over and over. But like I said, that's just me being lazy. There's nothing about the Galleon that's lazy. I guess I had to live up to its challenge. So there you have it. That's my review after living with the Galleon TS120 Standard Edition for three weeks. I'm looking forward to many more. I'm also looking forward to more episodes. If you are too, click subscribe, 
And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.